Hello, I'm Paul Cunningham. I'm a local chef forager from Dundrum and County Down. Uh, I grew up in the weeds as such. I do a Taywar style of cooking, which means I believe in the local ecosystem and the soil structure, and that makes my food better. It's like a local honey type idea, where the food, local food's better for you. So today we're up at Dundrum Castle, and we're going to just do a wee forage down around the back of the castle, and then we're going to move down to the shoreline, do a wee bit of a seaside forage, and then we're going to cook a vegan type of ramen on the beach only using forage ingredients. So I'm just going to show you a bit about nettles. So nettles, everyone thinks at the moment they're out of season. So first thing you want to do when if you're picking nettles is in springtime when they're just coming fresh out of the ground. And normally you just pick the tips because that's where all the energy and the goodness is. The nettles are really good for the body. They're so full of iron. And you know in springtime when you pick them, you get a real broccoli type of smell off them. So they've got that sort of flavor profile. But also now whenever you're moving into summer, um, at the end of summer, the nettles go into seed. And you can see here in the nettle plant, all the seeds. So. Like most people just walk past that. That's iron, that's part of a healthy diet right there. You know, when I do these, I dry them out and I would add them to crackers or I'd make a really nice um, green tea, a nettle seed green tea, and I would serve that with lamb. You know, it's, they're so good for you, like, you know, and they're all around you all the time. You know, most people cut nettles out of their garden, whereas you can eat them and they're good for your body. So what we have here is, is wood sorrel. So it comes from the French word sur, which means sharp. It's very lemony citrusy flavor with grassy notes. Um, this is actually a natural blood cleanser. So you can get all through the year, but the best time to eat is, is in spring, after you've been eating the harsh food during the winter, just to clean the body and get ready for a new year. Also, in, at the end of spring, you get the lovely wee flowers are quite nice. There's many uses. It's a lovely garnish on a dish. You're doing a wee beef dish or something, just a wee bit of zing to lighten up. But I also take the stems as well, and we blitz them up and make a vinegar. It makes a really, really fresh citrusy vinegar. It's really, really good for pickling blackberries. So what we have here is woodruff, it's one of my favourite spices. I call it more of a spice than a herb because I would dry this out normally to intensify the flavour. So the flavour of woodruff will give you, first of all, vanilla, but you also get dried hay there and a slight tobacco undertone. Really, really good for curing fish. And then I also normally serve that with buttermilk to counter off the flavours. Or um, I will do a really nice woodruff ice cream and serve that with fermented blueberry and verjus. Really, really nice. So it's, you can see what it looks like. It looks very like cleavers and yes, it's it's related to cleavers, and you can eat cleavers too, but just they're not very nice to eat. So what we have here is Herb Robert. You get it almost everywhere, like it's probably growing in your garden. As I always say, always forage your garden before you cut your grass, <laughs> you may as well. But um, Herb Robert's an amazing wee herb. So you'll get like a cumin flavor of it and uh, citrus undertones. And I really like making flatbreads with it, or you can make a nice pesto with it, or just a spice up wee stir fry at the end. Really, really nice, and it's really pretty too. So what we have here is it's a type of wild mushroom called common puffball. With these here, fresh is best. So you want to get them when they're nice and fresh and plump. You can see these are a wee bit withered. You want them a wee bit fresher, and very, very simple. Just cut them in half, quick wee fry in butter, and you're good to go. Or if you get them like this, if you want to use them, you don't want to waste them, you could dehydrate them and then they add them to stocks to add a wee bit more of a nami flavour and just bulk out that for you. So what we have here, folks, is another type of sorrel. So we had the wood sorrel earlier on, and now we have common sorrel. So you can see now, common sorrel, again, is that lemony flavour. I, I think it's a lot more lemony than the wood sorrel. Um, but you can see here in the wee leaf, if you're out picking this in the wild, ensure the leaf's pointed at the bottom. Otherwise, you could be coming across lords and ladies. And it would, it would grow in round common sorrel, but lord and ladies would have rounded bottoms. The difference between common sorrel and lord and ladies, this is really good for you and cleans your blood. The other one clogs your blood. So, you know, it's good to, it's good to know what's good for you and it's good to know what's bad for you. You know, it's um, foraging as much fun as it is dangerous. You know, I'm not trying to tell anyone not to start foraging. Um, it is quite easy to get started, but um, yeah, common sorrel is really, really good. So what we have here is uh, hawthorn. I believe hawthorn is a superfood. 
So at the moment now you can see the berries are coming in the season and they make a really, really good chutney or a ketchup. But see at the start of spring, you can use the young, young baby leaves and I would normally just pick a lamb down or eat them just fresh off the tree. And the thing about hawthorn is it's a superfood. So the hawthorn actually converts bad cholesterol into good cholesterol. There's nothing healthier for your body here. You know, there's no need for doctors. All you need is mother nature. So what we have here guys is, is wild plums. So um, there's so many different types of wild plums. Sloves even come into that, that factor. And these ones just aren't ready yet. I'm just showing you today. So these are a type of damson. Okay, and again, there's loads of different types of damson. But it's just so interesting to see what's, what's about you all the time. You know, and as I was saying here, I, anywhere I go somewhere new, I always go to old settlements because people had to live off something. You know, there wasn't no Tesco's years ago. Not that I go to Tesco's nowadays anyway, because I don't believe in them. And, I'm sort of doing a single man boycott with them. <laughs> but um, it's so interesting to see what's out there, you know? So that'll make a nice jam in about a month's time they're ready, I'll make a lovely jam. Yeah, so we've moved down to the coastline now, folks. This is um, Dundrum Inner Bay, where I grew up with my grandfather, forging here all the time. Very, very fond memories of digging up mussels and taking them straight home and getting them into the pot with the garlic butter. So come on here and we'll go for a wee dander and I'll show you what we're going to collect. So what we've got here folks is, is beach rose. So it's a type of rose hip. So you get dog rose is what people are most commonly familiar with. But this is the beach rose. Very interesting plant and the plant that keeps on giving. So first thing at the end of spring, start of summer, you get these lovely, lovely rose petals. And they're so fragrant. So fragrant, it makes a really, really nice vinegar or just pickled or dry them out and use them as wee spice. Um, and then after that, you get these gorgeous hips. Okay, so inside the hip, you get a lot of hers, which are quite, quite itchy and they're not good to eat. But these are full of vitamin C. And you can see the way, whenever you're more connected with nature and you start foraging, you can see why different things come up in different times of the year. And it's mother nature trying to look after you and say no to the doctor and <laughs> follow her. So they're full of vitamin C and they'll get ready get you ready for the harsh winter. So what I would normally do with these is I would blitz them up and then I would bring them up to the boil and then pass that and then just simmer it with sugar to make a simple syrup. And I assure you if you put a spoonful out there into a hot drink every day you'll not get the cold all winter. So so I'm having a wee snack, it's just really tasty. What we've got here is um, sea purslane, folks. Really, really robust sea vegetable. You can see the strength of the leaf. Um, you'll get this along every coastline. Um, what I really like to do, it's nice and a wee salad, just to season a salad. It's nice crisp texture. But if you're doing wee roast potatoes in the house, don't be adding salt. See when your roasties are just done, they just come out of the oven, just add a couple of handfuls of this. It'll season your roasties and give it a really nice flavor. Plus it'll look pretty nice too. So what I've got here, guys, is sea blight. Not the nicest name in the world, but very, very nice vegetable from the sea. Um, really nice in a salad or even we stir fry or just dipped into a emulsion and served with fish. But I quite like to dry it out, use it as a natural salt. Um, gives you that sort of, sea, it's better than sea salt, if you ask me. It looks better. It's free as well. So what we'll have here, folks, is, is sea aster, or some people like to call it asparagus of the sea. Um, with a beautiful little herb. Um, quite salty like the others, but it's got floral notes as well. And you can use the, use the leaf, but you can also use the wee flowers as well. Now, the middle of the flower will be quite woody, but I like to just pull the wee petals off and just use them. It looks just, looks quite pretty. It's quite a nice, pretty color as well. A nice, a nice velvety texture. And the wee floral note, beautiful. I got some sea truffle here. And you can see it, it's, it clings to this bladder rack. So if, if you're out on the beach, just look for the bladder rack and just, just push it over and you'll see all this amazing sea truffle just clinging to it. Now, it mightn't look like much now, but what I normally do with this is I give it a good rinse, make sure there's no sand, no, no soil on, and then I dehydrate it and use it as a seasoning. And honestly, it tastes like a truffle of the sea and it's free. Beautiful marsh sapphire. So a lot of people think there's, a lot of people will be familiar with this one, but they also don't know about um, rock sandfire as well. But we'll talk about marsh sandfire. So marsh sandfire, 
lovely, salty, fresh, quite juicy, quite juicy. Um, really, really nice, just pan fried in a wee bit of butter. Also very nice for a wee gin. Also nice in your roasties, or dehydrated for a wee salt. Um, difference between this and the, the rock sunflower is rock sunflower is a lot longer, and it's really, really fennel-y flavor. Really good. And you can see, I don't know if you can see over there, but you can just see a big carpet of it across the whole beach. So what I have here is, it's scurvy grass. Now, that name doesn't sound very, very appealing, but to me, it's very, very important. So scurvy grass is a very, very strong horseradish, um, horseradish flavor, very, very in your face, but it's also full of vitamin C. So back in the day, as we all know, the fishermen were, were dying, they were dropping like flies because the vitamin C deficiencies, until they found out about this wee boil, that they're able to just take bags of it and cut it and take bags of it and take it out to sea. And this is what saved a lot of their lives. So yes, the name scurvy grass isn't very nice, but it's very, very important. So next up is one of my all time favorites, sea buckthorn. What an amazing, amazing plant. Um, so you can see it gets its name because it's got these big massive thorns on it. Um, but the wee berries is what we're after. You'll see, this wee tiny jewel as I like to call them. So I'll have the flavor of 10 oranges squeezed into one wee berry, full of vitamin C. And you can see now it's coming up at the end of summer, start autumn, to get you ready for the harsh winter. Now the wee berries, I would normally freeze them. It just helps break down the tans a wee bit. And then you can put them into a juice. Like I would keep tubs of this in my freezer. And anytime I feel the wee cold coming on, I just make a quick wee juice and I'm sure you that cold goes straight away. But you can also use the wee leaves as well and just infuse them into hot water to make yourself a wee sea popcorn tea. Really, really good. It also makes a really, really nice gin. So I would make a sea buckthorn and fennel gin. So now for the fun bit. So we're, we're on the other side of the beach here in Dundrum and you can see the lovely backdrop of the Moor Mountains there. And um, that's one of my favorite parts of the bay. I'd be on here a couple of times a week. So, straight to the cooking. So, what we're gonna cook here is I wanted to do, I wanted to do a vegan dish and then I wanted to do something a wee bit different. So, I, I'm doing a ramen type of dish. So, we'll start off with the, the base liquid. So, yesterday I was out and I picked um, kombu seaweed and I picked um, sugar kelp and I picked sea lettuce. I also dried some shiitake mushrooms and I just simmered that there um, for an hour and a half with some celery. And we took that off the heat and instead of adding um, bonito, which would be um, cured, smoked and dried tuna fish bellies, I done that with sea radish root. And um, we just grated that there in and infused that there for 12 minutes and then just passed it. And we reduced that by a quarter. And then I add my um, mushroom soy sauce, just to again, bring a few, few more flavor. So that, that's the base of the ramen, that's, that's, our, that's our stock. And we're, we're gonna cook some Sea, sea spaghetti in that, so we're going to use that instead of noodles. Again, bringing in with the foraging flavors that we've got here. We're also got some sea beet, so the sea, sea beet leaves we picked earlier on. We've got the roots buried in the coals here, and they're just slowly cooking in the coals because we want to bring a bit of that charred flavor to the whole dish. And then um, what else I have here is we've got some pickled dollars, just a simple um, pickle. So it was 150 mils of meal and cider vinegar, uh, 100 grams of water, 50 grams of sugar, a tiny bit of star anise and some fennel seed. I've also got some lovely um, pickled wild garlic seeds. So, so seeds of the wild garlic plant, and I brine them for two weeks, and we pickle them with malt vinegar. I've got some lovely organic Romanesco. I've got some the amazing Ardmaha shiitake mushrooms. These are amazing. If you've never tried them, get on them. It's that simple. <laughs> I've got some lovely pennywort here as well. It's a pennywort snar, we forest ingredient. and then, Really nice, nice celery notes, and um, also great for anxiety. So it's also being out in the wild foraging, and um, we've got some of our scurvy, 
We've got some sea purslain. I've got a wee bit of spring onion here just to bring a wee bit of oniony flavour. And then we've got over some MSC. Some sugar kelp crisps that are now blowing away. We've got some sugar kelp crisps here as well. Just for a little bit of texture at the end. Okay, so we're just waiting for the sea radish fruit just to char down here. And then we're gonna get cooking. So I'm just chopping a couple of wee spring onions here just to add the end. And I took the sea radish root out there and I'm gonna give it a wee rub just to get a bit of that off, a bit of that charcoal off. And then we'll be slicing that down to add the end. I'm gonna stick our sea spaghetti in. Get that pushing away. It's just a wee bit of oil. And we're gonna fry off these lovely shiitake mushrooms. Again, I was saying about these shiitake mushrooms, so my good friend Jamie makes these down in Armagh. And um, if you want to talk about passion, we call him the Mushroom Whisper. <laughs> That's what he's known as in Northern Ireland, is the Mushroom Whisper. What a legend. That's wee mushrooms in. Again, there's no need for salt here. Just all our, all our seasons came from the seaweed. No need for salt at all. Let me let that fry away for a wee second. I got that Romanesco in there as well. Just going to add a wee bit of sea parcel now. We're almost done here. Very simple, very fresh. You know, food doesn't have to be complicated, you know. I've, don't get me wrong, I've, I've spent the last 23 years of my life, I've been cooking since I've been 12. Um, hours and hours and hours in the kitchen, um, ensuring that the customer's happy. But food doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't, you know. And it's a very enjoyable thing to do. And if you're to cook at home or anything, the best bit of advice I can give you is what my aunties told me. I had two aunties who were chefs, and they always told me, follow your heart. Because if your heart's in it, it's going to taste better. And the most important thing you have in your kitchen, it's not a fancy blender that costs you a thousand pounds or fancy bit of oven. You don't need any of that. All you need is a spoon. And the thing about tasting while you're cooking is, one, there's less secrets at the end because you're tasting it along and you know what's coming along. But two, it connects you with the dish. And through connection with the dish, you create more love for the dish. And I honestly believe if you're loving what you're doing, no matter where it's cooking or running or anything, you're going to naturally get better at it. And you're going to see that love and you're going to taste that love, you know, We're going to add a few of these wee white garlic capers as well. So again, wee white garlic capers. So again, it's taking that forage on the next level all the time. So like a lot of people just eat the wild garlic leaf and I'm sure these loads of people can find it anywhere, but I would take the leaf and then I use the flour and then I take the seeds and I would salt them in a 20% brine for two weeks. And then I took away that brine and I covered these in malt vinegar but I also do them where I just cover them in oil and they're absolutely amazing. But I also ferment them as well with 3% salt, do a lacto fermentation. And it's just taking that one product and showing it three different ways. But then also with the wild garlic, at the end of autumn, you can go and dig up the roots and use the roots as well. So it's just trying to take everything to the next level all the time. So we have a pick a little skin in and that's us. See that sea spaghetti. Thank you very much for watching this video. Hopefully you've all enjoyed it. Um, hopefully I've sparked that wee inner forager inside you that I know is there. Um, but hopefully it also makes you think about the environment. It makes you understand that your actions have consequences. And um, I, I would like everyone to start doing a little bit of foraging themselves. But there's a couple of rules come with the foraging. And that is, number one is respect mother nature at all times. And only ever take what you need. 
So happy foraging. Enjoy it and embrace it and just get out in that open.